Okay, so the next topic we're going to take a look at is the topic of data loading. And to make things interesting, we're going to look at how data loading works with regards to server-side rendered applications. So first of all, we're going to want to open up the code at the point that it was at at the end of the chapter about server-side rendering, right? After we added styled components and all that. If you don't have this, feel free to open up the starting state of the exercise files and make sure you run npm install to install the dependencies. So with server-side rendering, when we talk about data loading, things can get pretty interesting. And to show you what I mean, let's add some articles to our server that our articles page here can load. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up our server.js file. And we're going to add a special API route that our front end will be able to use to load the articles data. So what we're going to do is say app.get. We're going to have the route here be slash API slash articles. And basically what we're going to do is just send back some fake articles that we'll define here in an array. Normally you'd want to read these from a database, but just for simplicity's sake, we'll define them right in our source code. So we're going to say const articles and our articles are going to be an array of objects with a title property for which we'll just put article one, article two, article three, etc. And they'll have an author property which we'll just put some random names here for. All right, so we'll define a few of these. We'll say article two, author, Betty. And we'll have article three here. And the author for that will be Frank. Feel free to pick whatever names and titles you want. So now that we have our articles, what we're going to do in our articles route here is simply send that back to the client. Now, normally this would be where you'd read from the database. So just to make this a little more realistic, I'm going to say const loaded articles equals articles. This would normally again be a database call. And then we're going to send those loaded articles back to the client. We're going to say res.json loaded articles. Okay. So our front end now will be able to load the articles from this API route. So let's open up our articles page. And here's what that's going to look like. We're going to import the use effect and use state hooks. So we'll say use state use effect. And we're going to say const articles set articles equals use state and the initial state for our articles. We'll just make that undefined. And then what we're going to do is we're going to load our data inside a use effect hook. Chances are you've done this before in React, so I'm not going to explain it too much. We're just going to say fetch slash API slash articles. And since this is a promise, we can say dot then. If you want to use async await instead and you know how to convert that, go ahead and do it. We have a response here now. We're going to return that and convert it to a JSON. So we'll say response.json, which itself is a promise. And then we're going to say dot then. And we'll set the articles to the data that we got back from the server. Set articles data. And we only want this use effect hook to be called when our articles is first mounted. So we'll just pass an empty array as the dependencies for this use effect hook. Okay. And then to display our articles, we're just going to say articles. And to make sure they exist before we display them, we're going to say articles and articles dot map. And for each article, we're going to display it like this. We'll have a div with a key, which will be equal to the articles title. Inside that we're going to display the articles title in an H3 heading. So we'll say, article dot title and underneath that we'll display the author of the article by saying paragraph by and then we'll insert the article's author by saying article dot author 
And then we just need to wrap these in a React fragment. So let's build our front end by saying npm run build. And then we're gonna run our server with the same command that we've used before. All right, so let's load our app again. And what we're gonna see is that if we go to the articles page, our articles are all there. However, if we inspect the HTML that we got back from the server, what we're gonna see is that it does not actually include the articles, okay? So if we search for the title of one of our articles, for example, such as article one in here, we're gonna see that that doesn't exist. So basically what's happening is the server is server-side rendering the front end except for the parts where we need to load data. Now, as I mentioned when we first talked about server-side rendering, one of the main benefits of server-side rendering is that it shortens the number of round trips from the front end to the back end. So we're gonna to want to alter this in a way such that when our server renders our app, the server is the one that loads that data as well. In other words, our front end doesn't need to make those server requests. So in order to have our server be the one that loads the data for our application instead of our front end, there's a few changes we're gonna to need to make. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is go down to where we actually render our app and we're gonna to need to load the data here. Now, loading the data in our case is gonna be fairly simple. Since we're on the server, we have access to the data that the server contains, right? And if this were in a database, our server would be able to communicate directly with the database instead of having to make its own API request. So here's what this is gonna look like. Inside where we say fs.readfile and insert the rendered app into the HTML, what we're gonna do is load the data for the articles. Again, just to make this a little more realistic, I'm gonna say const loaded articles equals articles. This would normally be where we'd connect to the database. And the next thing we need is some way to pass these loaded articles to our rendered application. Now there are multiple ways to do this, but the way that I'm gonna show you here, just kind of a very basic way, is by adding the loaded articles themselves as data to the HTML document so that when it gets to the front end, our React app can actually take those directly from the HTML instead of having to make its own request. So here's what that would look like. Inside our data.replace here, right before we have our app, we're gonna want to insert a script tag. And inside that script tag, we're gonna say window.preloadedArticles equals and then we're gonna stringify our loaded articles as a JSON object. We're gonna say json.stringify loaded articles. Oops, we don't need those. There we go. It should just say dollar sign curly braces json.stringify loaded articles. Okay, so what this is gonna do is once our HTML gets to the client, it's gonna set the loaded articles on the window object under a property called preloaded articles, and our React components are gonna be able to access it through that window object. Now you might be wondering how this fits in with what I said earlier about not using the window object when we're doing server-side rendering. Well, in fact, you can use the window object, but you just have to make sure that it's not gonna be executing on the server side. And in our case, since we're putting that inside a script tag here, that won't be a problem. It's not gonna execute till it gets to the client. So that should be all we need to do on the server side for now. What we have to do now is go to our articles component and make it so that our articles component can load the data from the HTML document instead of from the server, provided of course that it is actually on the HTML document. So here's what this is gonna look like. First of all, with our use state hook here, we're gonna set the initial state to window, and we're gonna check, of course, if the window exists. And if it does, we're gonna check also if the preloaded articles exists on the window, all right? 
So basically what this will do is if there's preloaded articles, it will set that as the initial value for the state and we won't have to do anything. So now in the use effect hook, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if window and not window dot preloaded articles, right? In other words, if the window exists and there are no preloaded articles, then in that case, we want to load the articles from the server. And just to make this a little more visible, let's add a console.log statement here, which will say something like no preloaded articles found loading from server. This will allow us to see where on our server or on our front end, our articles component is actually loading the data. And that should be all we need to do on our front end. One last thing that we need to change is that right now, even trying to see if this window thing exists will throw an error on the back end. So what we need to do here is go into our server and add a fake window global to it. So we're gonna say global dot window. And we're gonna set that equal to just an empty object. That will stop us from getting the window does not exist error. All right. And that should be about all we need to do. So let's again, build our front end. We're gonna say npm run build. And you could create an automated script for this that would automatically watch and rebuild your app for you if you wanted. But we're just gonna keep building it manually for now. And then we're gonna run our server with the node daemon command. And let's now check our server-side rendering example. So what we're gonna see if we refresh our page is that the articles don't even flash. And that's because our articles page isn't actually loading them. If we take a look inside our HTML that we got back, and let's do a search for preloaded articles, we're gonna see that our server added this as a script before it rendered our React app. So what our articles page is able to do is just reach into this preloaded articles property on the window and get those articles instead of having to load them from the server. So this cuts down drastically on having to actually load data from the server. One thing to notice, however, is that the server is still not actually rendering our articles page with these articles info, right? It's not until our app actually gets to the user's browser that these things are re-rendered by the front end React when it calls reactdom.hydrate. In order to do that, we're gonna have to make our code a little more complicated. So let's take a look at how to have our server actually take care of rendering the data that we've loaded here, instead of just placing it in the HTML and having our React app render it after it gets to the client. The solution that we're gonna be using here involves using context, which we learned about previously. Essentially what we're gonna do is use context in order to communicate between our front end and our back end while on the server side. Before we move on though, I think I should probably point out that the reason we have to do this in the first place is that the use effect hook inside our components will not be called when our components are being rendered on the server side. That's just how it works. So basically we need to figure out a different way for our components to get their data when they're being rendered on the server. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be using context for that. So the first thing we're gonna do here is create a new context. And that context is gonna be called initial data context. Okay, and inside here, we're gonna define our context by saying import react from react. And then we'll say export const initial data context equals react.createContext and we'll pass an empty object as the default value for that. Okay, so that's our initial data context. The next thing we're gonna do is actually import and use this initial data context on our server. So let's open up our server.js file and up at the top here, we're gonna import initial data context. 
from initial data context. And then what we're going to do is we're going to provide this context to our application as it's rendering. All right. So what this is going to look like is around our static router, we're going to say initial data context dot provider. And we'll put our app that we're rendering inside of there. Now, in order for our server and our front end that we're rendering to communicate through this provider, what we're going to do is create an object here. We're going to say const, we'll call it context obj. And we're going to give it a few properties. You'll see what these actually do when we use them. So the first property is going to be is server side, and we're going to set that to true here. We're going to create another property that's underscore requests, which is going to be an empty array. And we're going to have another property that's underscore data. That's going to be an empty object. So here's our strategy here, and it might sound a little strange at first, but it will work. What we're going to do is render our app on the server side twice. The first time we render it, we're basically going to be finding out what components need to load their data on the server side. And then what we're going to do is load that data on our server and pass that data back to our components through the context provider here. That might sound really confusing, so just sit back and watch what it looks like. What we're going to do first is for our provider here, we're going to say value equals context object. And as you'll see, we're going to create a custom hook that our components will use to actually add their data loading needs to this context object, more specifically to this requests property here. Now we'll get to that in a second, but first, after we've rendered our app the first time, we're going to have all of the data loading needs inside this requests property. And all of those data loading needs are going to be expressed as functions. Again, that might sound confusing, but you'll see what that looks like when we get there. So what we're going to do is say await, and we're going to say promise dot all this will execute all of the data needs functions. And we'll say context object dot requests. And because we're using await here, we're going to have to go up here and add async to our callback. And under that, what we're going to do is say context object dot is server side and set that to false. So as you can imagine, our front end is going to use this is server side property to tell whether it's being rendered on the server or not. Our components are going to use that to determine whether or not they should actually make a request to the server or whether they should look in the window object for that preloaded data. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do is delete the requests property. This just gets rid of extra data. We're going to say delete context object dot underscore requests because we're going to be sending this context object to the client side in a similar way that we sent the preloaded articles. Before we do that, though, we're going to have to render our app a second time. And in fact, when we render it the first time, we don't need to do anything with that HTML. We're just getting the styles and the data loading needs with our style sheet here and our context object, respectively. So let's render it again. And to do that, we can actually just copy and paste this. And say const react app equals render to string. We don't need to collect the styles again, so we can remove that. And everything else is going to be the same there. We're still passing the context object to our provider. And the next thing we have to do is instead of setting this preloaded articles thing on here, which we don't need anymore, we're going to say window dot preloaded data equals json.stringify, and we're going to send that context object along with it instead. We're going to say context object inside json.stringify. 